Monster Lab. How's it going, everyone? Notice anything different about me? You may have already heard, but I was promoted thanks to all of you. This is for all the people out there trying to escape from being a newbie. You can always count on me to give you the most helpful tips that I discovered during my research. And to commemorate my promotion to senior researcher, I'll be reminiscing a bit by covering the monster who helped all of us clear DB10 back in the day. That's right, it's chilling, the water jack-o'-lantern. And his passive is the star of the show. Chilling's passive allows him to steal a buff from the enemy with each attack. That means he's perfect pick for places like the Dragon's Lair where immunity tends to be a problem. On top of that, his speed scales with the number of buffs he has, so it's practically a two for one deal. Chilling's second skill grants speed and crit rate buff to all allies. And when you use his second skill to dole out the buffs, his speed is going to increase accordingly. Now, time for a quiz. What's the difference between attack speed, increase, and attack bar? If you know the answer, amazing, you're great! But for those of you who aren't sure, attack bar increase boosts the attack bar by a set percentage, whereas the attack speed buff will boost your speed by 30% of your base speed plus the increased attack speed from the number of buffs on chilling. For example, when Bird lands a critical hit, it increases the allies' attack bars by 20%, whereas Chilling's second skill increases all allies' attack speed. With higher attack speed, the rate that the attack bar fills goes up. That means you'll be getting your turns faster than you may expect. If your damage output is too low to clear DB10, or you're looking to reduce your clear time, you can use Chilling to speed up your team and strip the immunity off the boss. His first skill's damage increases with his speed and hits three times with each hit waving a 30% chance to slow the target for two turns. And that slow goes a long way in DB10 and even in competitive modes like Guild Siege. I'd be remiss not to mention his leader skill. It's a 40% accuracy boost in dungeons. Okay, we can talk about chilling all day, but let's see what he looks like in action. We'll start off with his most common application, DB10. After a set amount of turns, the dragon gains immunity, and that might trip you up, but chilling is here to strip the immunity off the boss. Once the boss is vulnerable, you're free to apply debuffs and set up for damage with the rest of your team. Do you remember the episode on Alsharion? He's also able to steal immunity from the boss. The difference between them is that Alsharion steals, then copies the buffs for all allies, and Chilling just keeps them for himself. But remember that Chilling's second skill is more generous, so think about that when you're deciding who you'd prefer to bring. Next, I'll go over how he plays in guild content. Here's a tip for siege battle. With your secret weapon, you don't have to be worried about defenses with a bunch of buffs. Chilling can steal all those goodies, whether it's a shield or immunity or whatever else they may bring. You can easily neutralize teams that hide behind buffs. If you think he's just a support because of his utility, then think again. You're gonna want to plan your offense around chilling. I guess I should give you some tips about how to ruin him. I am a senior researcher now, after all. You guys can judge for yourselves, but since chilling's passive allows him to steal a buff each turn, the best set to complement that would be swift for more speed or violent for additional turns. But you may be stuck on what to go with for a two set. Will and Shield are both good options to keep chilling safe, especially Will if you're not going for that first turn. Plus, since you'll be starting the game with a buff, his passive will already boost his attack speed from the get-go. Revenge is another great option since Chilling can take buffs on a counter-attack. Add in a bit of attack speed and then top it off with some HP, and we have ourselves a utility monster that won't back down from a fight. So what do you think? Chilling is super useful even outside of DB10. If you have one that's been retired from dungeons, start putting him to use. I'd say that was a report that only a senior researcher like me could write. That marks the end of today's research. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Monster Lab, we research monsters for you.